Greetings, I'm Dave Householder, and I'm blessed to be coming to you from the Anza Borrego Desert. And we are looking at Psalm number 41, the Psalm of David. And David is very sick. He's on his sick bed, and he's praying to God to get off of his sick bed. And his enemies hope he dies. Now, this is not a situation where any of us want to be in. But the truth is, if you're in leadership, people there's people who don't like you, and people would just soon you go away. But what's really even more important here is the urgency at which David talks to God, and he's just bearing his heart to God, because from what we can tell in the Psalms, David doesn't believe in an afterlife. Now, you might think that's pretty strange for one of the major writers of the Bible not to believe in an afterlife. But the truth is, throughout the Old Testament, this was not a settled issue. It just wasn't. And until Jesus finally came down on the side of there being an afterlife, because people came to him and said, uh, yeah, if somebody marries lots of people when he's in heaven, is uh, who's he married to? And these are people who believe that there is no afterlife. These are not atheists, by the way. Just because you don't believe in an afterlife doesn't mean you don't believe in God. And uh, the Jewish people have always sort of argued over this. And they were arguing over the time of Jesus, and Jesus came down solidly on the side of an afterlife. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because they are alive, those kinds of things. And before that, people weren't sure, and David wasn't sure about an afterlife. And uh, he would even say to God, hey, uh, if I die, no one's going to praise you from the, from the grave, and that's it for me. And so David had a real sort of existential way of looking at this right here, and he was really serious about it. And we sometimes take for granted the fact that Jesus believed in life after death and Jesus believed in eternal life. We just think, well, everyone in the Bible taught that. But Jesus is the one who came down solidly on the side of there being an afterlife. And just think how much that changes the game for all of us, because those of us who believe in eternity with God, we, we don't have to fret over every little thing here, and we don't have to have this massive fear of death because we really do believe that life goes on after death. And I think it's one of the easiest things to believe in, actually. Even if I'd never seen a Bible and I'd never heard about church and never heard about Jesus, I would intuit that uh, there is something about us that is not physical. Uh, there is Your brain is not doing the thinking. Your brain is like... Um, a host for the thinking. There's a sense of self that goes back to the time when you were four years old and uh, none of the cells in that body are still in the body that you're in right now. Uh, there, there's a sense to which we are not just physical beings. And we could talk about the mystery of consciousness and all those kind of things uh, for a great length of time, and perhaps I will in future lessons. But just think about the miracle that you are, that human consciousness is such an amazing thing and we intuit, we, we assume, for a lot of good reasons, that our bodies are the host of our soul, our spirit, whatever you want to call it, and not that which produces our consciousness. And that's probably a really good way of looking at it. I'm actually studying neuroscience and, and cognition right now, and there are no scientists, really, who fully understand human consciousness. It is a great mystery. I mean, think about dreams. <laughs> you don't. Uh, it's, it's like we don't produce these dreams. We don't have control over them, and yet they seem to be coming out of our mind and our memories. And there's there's a sense to which we're much bigger than everything. There's so much about us that we can't fully understand, and we'll uh, inside of us is so much bigger sometimes than on the outside. And just to enjoy that mystery, enjoy that mystery of life, and to to see it for what it is. We're so much more than just robots with a computer in our heads. We, we, we just have this amazing sense about us of being a part of something and being a part of creation. So enjoy that. And uh, we can rejoice that Jesus just clearly said, yep, <laughs> you're much bigger than just your body. Uh, we believe in the resurrection of the body. That's a whole other thing. But the truth is, there is something about us which goes on no matter whether or not our body does. And uh, I think we sense that. But the Bible confirms that, especially through Jesus and I do feel bad for King David sometimes because he laments the fact that uh, if he dies, that's it. And yet uh, he still had a great relationship with God. So uh, even without a future hope and an anchor of the soul, he was able to have that fantastic 
a man after God's own heart kind of relationship. So let's think about that. Let's rejoice in that. That's the good news for today. You are much more than a machine. And uh, you and I both know that uh, whatever you are, whatever I am, it, uh, it goes on beyond the physical world. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.